Hello, everybody, and welcome to the NASCAR Post Race Show for the 2023 Wawa 250, presented by Coca-Cola. A great race that saw a great photo finish. I apologize if I don't have my normal uh, energy. Um, I was at a high school football game tonight. I'm very tired. It's 11.45 local time where I am. Uh, when I'm filming this, and I got another full day tomorrow, of course, with the NASCAR Cup Series regular season finale, pre-race podcast and show uh, is out now, and we also previewed that yesterday, Thursday, with Bob Ponkers. It'll be Saturday when you're, you're all seeing this, but Justin Allgaier gets his second win of the year and the fourth win this year for Junior Motorsports, and also, maybe most importantly, his first win uh, at Daytona. It's a track that... He, He's just been unable to conquer. He's had some bad wrecks there. Um, just a track that really hasn't been too kind to him, whether that be in bad luck in wrecking or barely losing. Um, you know, it's just, it hasn't been his friend. Tonight, though, it was. It was not the friend of Sheldon Creed. And Creed probably had the best car there. Obviously, Austin Hill, who for the second year in a row just hasn't been able to capture the Summer Daytona race. It's. His kryptonite, apparently. He can win every other Super Speedway race, just not the Daytona Summer one. Um, he was pretty good. Uh, I'm actually not sure where he ended up finishing. Uh, 23rd, actually, in a race where he deserved a much higher finish and a pretty cool camouflage paint scheme. But Sheldon Creed, just another way to lose one. He said it last week after Watkins Glen. Darlington last year, Portland this year, Watkins Glen last week, and now tonight, just another way to lose a race. He's getting close. He definitely improved his playoff position, as did Parker Klugerman with the P4. We'll talk about him and Riley Herbst in a little bit. But um, Sheldon Creed, so close, but no cigar. Five one-thousandths of a second separated him and Justin Allgaier when they crossed the stripe. Plenty of wrecks tonight. You had Josh Williams uh, nearly go off the ground. Trevor Bain threw a questionable block on Austin Hill and, and they wrecked and then Brett Moffat and some other guys were involved in a big one earlier in the race. Uh, the biggest big one though was that Bain wreck. It took out him, Austin Hill, a lot of heavy hitters and Bain was doing a solid job leading, you know, with 13 to go in his first race of the season in any NASCAR series. Uh, he's going to race here. He's going to race or this race. And then I believe uh, Darlington next week in Texas are the races he's running. Um, I believe that's right. I may be wrong, but signed on for three races. Um, doing a nice job, and then he just threw a bad block on Austin Hill, but bad blocks happen in racing at Daytona. Daniel Hemrick third, solid day for him. Parker Kligerman fourth, he leaves Daytona plus 20. Gains 23 points in total on the playoff cut line. The man he's battling, Riley Herbst, ends up in where? Where did he finish? 24th. Uh, two laps down. For the second week in a row, mechanical issues take him out of contention. Last week, it was the track bar mounts, an engine issue. This week, uh, some tire issues, some brake issues, and it all goes to pot for Riley Herbst. So, he was very mad on the radio, as he should be. You can't bring a car like this. And this is what he said on the radio. You can't bring a car like this to the racetrack. I don't care if you're in the middle of a playoff battle or not. You can't bring a car like this to the racetrack. He started off so good, and then he had a lot of not-so-good races in a row. A lot of it was on him. Not all of it. These last two weeks, not been on him. If he if he doesn't have these mechanical issues, he's in the playoffs right now. Um, you know, tonight was the night of what-ifs. If Sheldon Creed doesn't get a little bit loose on the backstretch making or trying to make the pass on Allgaier, maybe he clears Allgaier, and maybe, we'll talk, maybe we're talking about Sheldon Creed getting his first career win. Night of what ifs. Uh, but Kligerman leaves plus 23 or plus 20 on the cut line. Herbs came in plus three. Cole Custer, a solid top five. And then you kind of have some underdogs here. Ryan Segan, sixth. Parker Retzloff, seventh. Fast Pasta, eighth. Gray Galding, ninth. Justin Haley, tenth. That 10 card just cannot get over the hump. Coda is their only win this year. Jeffrey Earnhardt, 11th. Jeb Burton in a throwback to his father awards the Daytona 500 winning scheme. 12th. Kyle Sieg, 13th, Joey Gates, 14th, Jordan Anderson, 15th in the 27, Garrett Smithley, 16th, Josh Berry, who went spinning on the final lap, 17th, Brett Moffat, 18th, Sam Mayer, 19th, uh, Kaz Grala, 20th, JRM, guys, is picking up steam, by the way, 
their only win prior to Sam Mayer's breakthrough at Road America was Allgaier at Charlotte in that fuel mileage battle with uh, John Hunter Nemechek. Um, but three wins in the last, what, six, seven races. So they're, they're picking up the pace. Uh, Sammy Smith, 21st. He had a much better race tonight. I know he ended up 21st, but spun early in this race a year ago. Led laps tonight late. Chandler Smith, 22nd. Hill, 23rd. Deserved a much better finish. Riley Herbst, 24th. Blaine Perkins, 25th. Jeremy Clements, last year's winner of this race, 26th. Josh Williams, 27th. John Hunter Nemechek, 28th. So both guys battling for the regular season had issues. Nemechek earns 14 points. Hill earns 33. So I believe Hill's like now 30 up. Um, and Sheldon Creed won stage two in a thrilling finish over Hill, side drafting here in 54 points. Big points tonight for him. Trevor Bain, 29th. J.J. Yaley, 30th. Cesar Baccarella, 31st. Ryan Ellis, friend of the channel, 32nd. Kyle, Kyle Weatherman, 33rd. Joe Graff, 34th. Natalie Decker, 35th. Brandon Jones, 35th or 36th. Tough race for him. Must win Darlington and Kansas if he wants to make the postseason. Connor Mosak, 37th. Alex Gwinnett, 38th. Let's move on over to the points. It still is Austin Hill leading John Hunter Nemechek. I think I thought Nemechek would win the regular season, but now it's Allgaier in second. He only trails Hill by 27. He's coming on strong. Uh, Nemechek minus 28. Um, Custer minus 102. So it's three guys separated by 28 points for the regular season with two races left. Hill with four wins. Nemechek with five. Allgaier, Custer, Mayer with two, Chandler Smith, Sammy Smith, Jeb Burton with one. First man on points, still Josh Berry, plus 110. Sheldon Creed goes from plus 28 to plus 60, or plus 22 to plus 60. He gains 38 points on the cut line tonight. Daniel Hemrick gains 28 points on the cut line tonight, plus 56. Parker Kligerman, plus 20. All the guys around the bubble save for Brandon Jones and Riley Herbst, did what they needed to do tonight. So Kligerman, plus 20, last man in. First man out is Herbst, who is minus 20. Since he went 6 for 6 in top 10s to start the year, Riley Herbst has four top 10s in the last 18 races. Jones, minus 88. Moffat, minus 116. Can they still mathematically point their way in? Yes, is it basically impossible? Yes, I would say Jones and Moffat need to win. Herbs can get in. I think the next two tracks, um, I'd still probably pick Herbs because SHR is better on the intermediates than um, Big Machine Racing is. And Kligerman, I think, is slightly worse at those tracks than Herbs. Herbs also has the better car going to those. Um, but I'd give the edge to Herbs. Momentum-wise, momentum Uncle Mo is on the side of Parker Kligerman, who now has 13 top 10s. That's only four less guys than Austin Hill and John Hunter Nemechek. Owner standings-wise, the 10 is still in 5th. The 19 drops down to 9th. Um, so the 18 and the 27 are out of the owner's playoffs. Very important to note there. Manufacturer-wise, still the Bowtie Brigade. Uh, they get win number 13. On the year tonight, they lead Toyota by 82 and Ford by 116. Ford 34 back to Toyota. Chevy 13 wins. Toyota 8 Ford with just three. Overall takeaways. Good race. Standard Daytona race. Xfinity Series always puts on a show. Not just at Daytona. Virtually everywhere. Sonoma this year is the only race for them that I can really not remember anything happening. And even at Sonoma, you had that kind of final restart where Amarola is able to take advantage of, you know, the restart and Larson and Almendinger's mistakes to win it. So uh, every Xfinity Series race this year has had something really memorable. And I guess every race in the top three series has. Um, but just they put on great shows every week. Their package is better than the Cup Series right now, in my opinion. Their, the air bubble is kind of restricting. But overall, great race. Photo finish, five one thousandths of a second, separating all guy and Creed at the line. Tomorrow, the Cup Series post-race show Sunday. We do have a race Sunday, the Truck Series playoff race in Milwaukee, the Truck Series post-race show. So thank you for hanging with me. This is going to come out Saturday. Uh, thank you for hanging with me today. Cup Series show is out. Cup Series podcast is out on all major podcast platforms. Um, Spotify, Google Podcasts, you can find us below the yellow line. Email me, below the yellow line podcast at gmail.com. All lowercase, no space, below 
the yellow line podcast at gmail.com. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, and share. I'll see you tomorrow, folks, or later today, Saturday night for the Cup Poster Show. I'm Samuel Sup from the Spotter Stand and the Below the Yellow Line podcast. Goodbye.